everyone. Um, am I audible? Can I be heard? Yep. Uh, yeah, it's so good to be here. It's my third state of the map. I'm not sure exactly what trajectories in the world keep bringing me here, but it's my first time on this side of the fence, and it, um, so I'm both nervous and excited about talking about some of the work we've been doing over the past kind of many months, looking at, um, looking at approaches to better validate the data on the map, right? Um, you know, I know most of us know this, but I think it's always nice to pause and just take in these numbers. When I first saw OpenStreetMap, you know, as a project about eight years ago, I think, this was unimaginable. It was, uh, you know what, we're gonna try and create, like, have people map everything in this world? Really, can that work? Um, we've gotten pretty far. Um, those are numbers that I almost don't know how to say, like three billion something nodes. Um, and, you know, we've been focused on mapping, right? Like, it's like, how do we complete this map? It's, it's, it's an unimaginably hard task, and somehow people have come together and we've, we've come this far. So, you know, we're, we're potentially moving to, to another I wouldn't say there's still so much left to be mapped, but we're moving to a phase in the project where people are seriously depending on this. There's, there's, there's end users who are using this for, for directions, for base maps. Uh, millions of people are looking at this map every day and uh, how can we improve processes to you know, detect breakage, um, validate the data on the map. Um, and so that's what my talk's gonna be about speak about some things that we've been working on and, um, you know, and ask the community how we can work together better on, um, on this problem because, of course, there's a lot of edits every day, the world is a big place, and, you know, none of us can do this alone. So um, I'm really hoping to have, uh, you know, a lot of questions and discussion at the end, and then there's also, like, a buff that we're holding later on in the day, so I'm really hoping this is as participatory as possible. I'll be showing some of the things that we've been working on, but I really want this to be as open-ended as possible. Um, so, you know, most of us know this. Um, you can go to OpenStreetMap, you can sign up, you can use your editor of choice. It's easy as this to draw things on the map, um, draw roads, draw buildings, um, mark your favorite restaurant, whatever you want to do, and, you know, the first, the first thing people ask when you tell them that this is possible is like, but isn't it always breaking? Aren't people always breaking things? Aren't you know, people drawing crazy things on the map? How does, how does this work? I mean, it's the same questions people had with Wikipedia when Wikipedia started. It's the same question people have with the map. Um, so how does, this not, how does this not break? I mean, mostly, this community is amazing, right? We all know this. Um, We've, I'll go through some of our processes, but the, the short answer is that the community is amazing at detecting and fixing problems really fast. Um, and as, as we get more editors on board, as we expand, you know, how can we do this in a more sustainable way? How can we do this more? How can we encourage this more in the community? Um, there, are, there are structures, the mailing list works really well to report when you see a user kind of vandalizing the map or doing something that's like intentional. There's pretty good procedures for warning a user, starting off friendly, you know, the, the data working group, they do a great job, you know, will first kind of temporarily block a user, say look, just read what we have to say, then you can sign in again, start editing again, user continues do, doing something, they get blocked, this works pretty well. And the other thing that we found is that most bad edits that happen on the map, and they happen, editing geometries is hard. It, you know, it takes skill, it takes practice, we all make mistakes. People who've been editing for years make mistakes. Um, so a lot of bad edits are accidental, right? Um, and there isn't so much intentional vandalism. This could change uh, when we started looking at this. I, you know, I didn't know what sort of like can of worms we'd be opening up when we actually started looking at stuff more in detail. I think the overall good news is that there isn't much vandalism, but you know, how do we prepare for a time when there might be, right? When there's more end users looking at this map, when people think like, oh, it might be fun to go do something, whatever. 
Uh, why is this important to us, right? Of course, um, I'm doing this as part of my day job, which is great. I get paid to do stuff that I wanted to do anyways. It's amazing. Um, so we had Mapbox. Uh, what do we do? We, we, serve, we serve Mapbox streets, which is you know, open street map, which can be styled, which um, a lot of our customers use. We actually update this in real time from open street map, right? So from the time that an edit is made in open street map to the time it goes live for our customers who are using our streets product um, is about 10, 10 minutes, right? So it's really important to us to catch these things as soon as possible um, and to fix them and to, you know, make sure our customers don't see broken maps. Uh, we provide directions uh, using OpenStreetMap data. We've got an open source project called OSR OSRM where we sort of like rebuild the directions graph every six hours from OpenStreetMap data. Again, we don't want people to drive into a lake or something, so it's pretty important um, that for us that the map doesn't break. Um, and of course, breakages result in broken maps for millions of our end users. Um, this is some of the kind of, this is what our maps look like and you know, we want to keep them looking pretty. Um, some of our customers, uh, we've got some pretty big customers, Pinterest, Foursquare, the Weather Channel uses us. Um, directions, you know, we provide a routing service. Um, there's a few different customers of our routing service, um, something we're working really hard on and uh, you know, it would be really sad for us if our routing broke every few hours. So what has our approach been? How are we tackling this? What are we looking at? Um, so I work in the Bangalore office in Mapbox. We've got, we've got an absolutely amazing team, um, people doing map, mapping, people doing reviewing. Uh, so we've been spending a few hours every day, like let's start looking at this problem. Uh, it's, it's great to be able to like have eyes on the map to start like sussing out what this problem looks like better. Uh, so we do daily manual reviews uh, based on some of our tools, which I'll get into. Um, it's not a random sampling of edits, but um, you know, I'll get into why it's, it's been kind of hard to like, actually like, crystallize definite uh, bad edits. But we're trying to get you know, a map of what it looks like, what are patterns around bad edits, how can we start writing better software to fix these. But right now, let's just look at a lot of things and identify what problems are. And of course, as we find problems, uh, fix them. Um, so yeah, we've been iteratively uh, building upon uh, building, um, you know, building upon a great ecosystem of existing tools, uh, looking at building our own tools and uh, playing around with different approaches, right? And importantly, identifying the kinds of problems and patterns in uh, bad edits so that we can start building up, um, you know, like a corpus of bad edits um, for other people to use to sort of like base machine learning approaches and stuff like that on. Um, what are the types of errors that we encounter? They're pretty broad. I didn't want to go into kind of, I could spend the entire sort of session talking about like details of types of errors. But broadly, there's a lot of newbie errors. Like, you know, people are editing the map for the first time. They're gonna accidentally move a node. They don't know how the tagging structure works. Uh, does anybody really know how the tagging structure works? Um, but, um, but you know, there will be mistakes. Um, these times we try and be as nice as possible. You know, send them a message. Thank you so much for editing the map. This is how it can be improved. Uh, if we can help you, please let us know. Uh, a very common thing is license violations. We just, you know, look at chain set comments. People who say, um, like, oh yeah, we saw this in Google Maps and we just put it here. It's like, you know, that's really sweet of you, but uh, that violates the license. Please don't do that. Uh, we also noticing that that happens quite a lot. There's now a fix in ID that warns users when they like have a chain set comment that says Google in it and says, uh, if you're copying from Google, please don't do that. And we've noticed this come down significantly after we managed to push that change. Uh, there's accidental breakages a lot. Um, anyone who spent a lot of time sort of editing geometries, there's like just moving one node uh, a distance can kind of break break things significantly, um, which you know happens all the time, and uh, we try and detect that. And then, of course, there's a very, very, very small subset of intentional damage, right? Intentional damage includes stuff like people naming roads after themselves, like why not? Um, you know, all roads can be called Sanjay Bhanga Road, that would be so nice. Um, <laughs> There's people doing it for profit, of course. There's like people putting like advertising links to their links to their website, um, stuff like this. There's there's people just messing around. Some people really like the fact that like it's a drawing tool. You can do art. So there was like a big like really like it's so sad to like remove it 
because someone spent a lot of time on that, but like, you know, like this turtle in the middle of Russia that was like beautifully handcrafted, but you know, that's, there is, there is what, that there's like open fictional map or so, which is a great place for people who want to do that, but it doesn't belong in open street map, right? Um, so just some kinds of things, um, you know, you can see like a node movement can really, like a single mo node moving can, really visually damage the map. This was something that happened a few months ago, um, a single node resulting in, you know, in the middle of Manhattan, sort of like major visual damage. Um, this was fun. Um, <laughs> why not, right? Um, this stuff is hard to detect. I, 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 I'll come to speaking about that. Um, you know, newbie errors happen all the time, um, you know, but let's focus on being nice to them. We want to welcome more people to the community. We all made those mistakes when we started off. Um, right, so some, these are not comprehensive numbers, but just to give you an idea, we try and review, um, you know, about 80 to 100 change sets um, every day in the team, um, go over, try and, uh, you know, we. We've got, I'll show you the tool that we're kind of using. So we do try and like review chain sets that may have like suspicious looking comments or that do like mass deletions or mass additions. Uh, but it doesn't seem so different from doing a random sampling. Like the percentage that we find that have problems is sort of like less than 2.5%. Uh, and a lot of the problems are really small. Um, but these are what some of those numbers look like by you know different suspicion categories that we put them in and try and review as much as we can. Um, how we respond, as I said, you know, uh, be as friendly as we can in chain set comments. Uh, most, almost all the time, it's it, it's a genuine error, and we want to be as nice to the person as possible. Jawsm has a great uh, revert tool, um, so you know, if there's a chain set that you notice that this chain set was just bad, you can just put in the chain set ID. Please read all the caveats associated with that. If those features have been subsequently changed, you need to just make sure and check that like everything is okay after your reversion. But uh, it's a pretty easy tool to just revert a change set. So you know, uh, you can look up the Jawsm revert plugin. It's great. Um, if we do notice something um, intentional, which most of the time someone has already noticed that before us, uh, the community is just amazing. Um, and then we will escalate it to like the mailing list, to the DWG, which is usually really great at responding. Uh, and as I said, most often problems are already fixed. So we still do try and collect, the, collect this data as much as possible and you know, to try and build up this corpus. So even if a problem is already fixed, we make a note of it, uh, plug it into a spreadsheet that we're now, we've got a repository where we're just collecting all these fixtures to sort of like build up this corpus of bad edits to see what we can do, it, do with it in the future. Um, some of the existing tools um, that we depend on uh, a fair bit as well. Um, there's HDYC, How Did You Contribute by Pascal Nice that lets you look up user histories, like really amazing detailed sort of user histories um, in OpenStreetMap. Um, who did it that lets you kind of like zoom into a bounding box, um, see change sets by a kind of like time period, filter by change set comment, et cetera, and get details for those change sets. Uh, it lets you export an RSS feed of this that can be really useful for keeping a track of changes in your neighborhood, for example. Uh, Osmos, uh, Osmos, I hope I pronounced that right, uh, and Keep Right, which kind of try and flag common errors, um, try and flag common errors on the map, right? Um, just quick screenshots of these. Um, how did you contribute? Um, um, sorry, uh, who did it? Um, this, you know, you can select your area. You see kind of the number of chain sets. Um, um, Osmos and keep right that just like flags common errors, lets people kind of quickly go in and fix them. Um, these tools are great. We wanted things that we could iterate on a little bit more and. Uh, you know, use different approaches. So we use a mixture of kind of like those tools and our tools. Um, and I'll come to like how I want to work with you people to try and like um, consolidate these efforts. Um, so our tools are based on kind of three things. Uh, chain set metadata, which is something called OSM Char Django, great developer called Willie Marcel, uh, developed it and then uh, been, we've been working a bunch of the code to kind of add features and stuff. Um, daily analysis of OSM QA tiles. Uh, we have this project called OSM Lint, uh, where we 
run these processes on um, OSMQA tiles, which is basically just geometry of all of OpenStreetMap that we can process kind of quickly. And then real-time change detection monitoring is something that we've been looking at where we get a stream of features uh, coming out of our internal pipelines that we run some analysis on. Um, this is what OSM Charge Ango looks like. You can kind of search through change sets based on different things. So like you can search by editor when maps.me got, uh, you know, started coming into the scene. We'd spend some time searching by editor for maps.me changes every day, for example. Um, you know, it gives you a list of chain sets, you click through. Um, we, we built something called Chain Set Map that uh, kind of lets you visualize a chain set on a map. It was built on this great tool called Achavi, but we just sort of like, uh, we needed some features that we kind of forked it. Um, and um, yeah, so, and then there's OSM Lint, um, as I said, so it lets us process all the tiles for the world. So we do this once a day uh, and find common errors, um, stuff like, roads that are over water, stuff that roads are intersecting with buildings, things that sort of like kind of just linting the map, right? Things that happen all the time and things that we just want to kind of like just keep a practice of fixing, right? And then, um, so this is just the, the, it depends on a library called Tile Reduce, which is just a great way of splitting up this job onto like multiple processors on machines and be able to parallelize, parallelize this work and do it kind of fast. Um, and then we plug it into a microtasking tool called TwoFix, where it allows people to just look at these issues individually and fix them really fast. Um, these are some statistics of from when we've started working on it, the different kinds of errors that we've looked, like, looked at and how many um, issues we fixed, how many things that we've reported as false positive. Um, you know, there's stuff like unconnected, um, unconnected major highways of just like highways that were not connected to the main road network because of, you know, tiger imports and different things that have happened. And, um, you know, the team just goes in. It's really quick for us to like plop it into two fix and just like start fixing stuff. Um, so that's something we do daily. Uh, right now there's about 50 to 100 issues on like the highways that come up daily. We spend a couple of hours doing this. Um, you know, just linting things. Uh, Real-time change detection is something I'm really excited about. It's something we're gonna be hacking on a little bit tomorrow, like how can we detect like the stream of features coming out of OSM in real time, perform some analysis. Um, yes, it's my two minute mark. Uh, this is an interface we've built. Unfortunately, the real-time change detection is right now dependent a bit on our internal pipelines. Uh, the first ticket in that repository is how do we open source this? It's something that we are looking towards, but right now this is the internal tool that we use uh, to monitor the outputs from you know, things that we flag um, from the change detection. Uh, we use some of the data that we collect at, as Mapbox to improve the map. Uh, we get telemetry data from users, which is really useful in detecting like incorrect and missing turn restrictions on the map. Like if there's something saying no left, but our telemetry data shows lots of people turning left, it's probably around turn restriction, we look at it, try and verify it with mapillary coverage um, and fix it. Uh, our directions API, we get kind of like errors that were like, oh, this route was unroutable, and then we see why was it unroutable, and often it's because that road network doesn't connect with the rest of the road network, and that's something we can go ahead and fix as well. Um, the challenges that we faced right now, as you notice, that it's a bit fragmented between these different kinds of tools, like analyzing chain set metadata, analyzing things at the feature level, analyzing things at the tile level, and it's allowed us to like quickly iterate on each of these approaches, but it's a bit frustrating to have it fragmented, and I'm really interested in talking about uh, you know, stuff that you guys have been working on and how we can bring these processes a bit together. Each of these approaches has its like subtle limitations, um, which it, you know, it, it'll be great to bring together. Uh, there's no substantial corpus of bad edits. That's the first thing we went around hunting for, like, oh, there must be someone who's maintaining like a corpus uh, that we can base stuff on that doesn't really seem to exist, so that's something we're trying to build. Uh, if anyone's working on that, it'll be great to talk. Um, the world is very large, you know. Um, we know that it's, I mean, it's getting smaller, but the geography of it is still really large. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, you know, our, it's not like our data teams are really gonna be able to keep an eye on the whole world. So, you know, how do we do this better as a community? How do we collaborate? Uh, how do we consolidate our efforts? It's of course important to a lot of people in this room that the map, you know, stays reliable and, and, and is protected from things like vandalism. So, 
how do we work together? Uh, how can we build better tools for the community? How can we support that? I'm super interested in sort of like just figuring out what the community wants. Um, and then of course the fancy machine learning stuff which I know very little about so I'm looking forward to learn. I think there's a lot to be learned from the Wiki, uh, Wikipedia experience and of course like geographic data is quite different from textual data. Textual data has a longer history of sort of like spam analysis and stuff like that which doesn't necessarily exist for geographical data. But how can we learn a lot from um, the projects like Wikipedia who've obviously done this extremely well. Well, um, these are some of our code repositories. I've got the stop sign, so I'm going to go really fast. Um, uh, how can we consolidate efforts? The, we're having a BOF in room 107 at 4 p.m. and a hack day tomorrow, and thank you. Um, <laughs> um, yep. We've got about five minutes for questions, discussions. I really wanted more, but um, yeah. So, you know, I'm directly not so involved with the directions team, so I may say something wrong. Uh, the code is open source. Um, so we use, or we do factor in, uh, so obviously highway is the most important thing. Uh, we do do bicycle routing and uh, road routing. We don't do uh, public transportation yet. Um, we do do walks, so sidewalks are really important to us. Uh, we have spent some time and... There's a lot of discussion around the proper way to tag sidewalks, yeah. Um, so we've been trying to bring some um, consolidation to that, but yeah. I, As a follow-up, how big is your team? We've got 27 people now. Yep, sorry. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. How can we grow the community in the U.S. Mm -hmm. so that this is happening here as well? Yeah, this is, I mean, this is exactly what I want to find out, right? Uh, so I think things that have worked really well and things that people use is essentially this, like people monitoring their neighborhood. We know at OSM this is what works, right? People are really passionate about their own neighborhood. People are really passionate about a subset of tags that they are passionate about, bike lanes. Bikers really care about bike lanes, for example. Um, so this, I mean, this is essentially like right now you can do RSS feeds for a bounding box, but how can we make that more detailed and maybe more like I love RSS, but maybe everyone doesn't, and how can we make that more accessible to people so that it's really simple? Uh, but this is, this is unfortunately a tool we don't have yet, and I'm really interested in building it. So yeah, I'd, I'd throw that question a little bit back to the audience if, uh, if people have good ideas for this. We'll be hacking a little bit on infrastructural stuff tomorrow that we think can support uh, work like this. Um, and of course, I'd be interested to know how to get people more excited about like monitoring their neighborhoods because that's, that's becoming increasingly important, right? Like a lot of neighborhoods are really well mapped, but now we just need to continue gardening. And does that, does that answer the question? I'm sorry it wasn't. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think there's, I mean, I think things get fixed really fast in OpenStreetMap. Like, I definitely see that as a strength and not a weakness in terms of, like, um, you know, it being an open volunteer effort. Like, and from, I, I mean, it's slightly anecdotal, but what we've noticed is definitely, like, that the lag time and things, uh, the response time is really quick on OpenStreetMap. Uh, people notice things broken and fix them. I mean, to answer the self-driving cars, I mean, that was the April Fool's joke, right? Like that open street map for self-driving cars is available. I think we're probably a little bit, but that's definitely something that, you know, is 
you know, I know we're thinking about and that lots of people are thinking about, uh, I think one would definitely have to think um, think about, you know, how do we, how do we maybe have some pre-moderation or something when it comes to that, uh, when it comes to that state. It's something that we're not there yet. And luckily I'm not directly involved in thinking about that or taking responsibility for that. So it's not, um, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, but I definitely see the volunteer effort and community involvement as more of a strength than a weakness in this regard. Like, I definitely think we'll need some safeguards when it comes there, but hopefully these tools will be a lot more mature. I think the community seeing that kind of validation detection and, you know, having the data open makes it also a lot easier for so many more people to work on, to work on detection and stuff like machine learning algorithms and detecting breakages and routing graphs. These things have gotten so much better over the past year or two that I think, um, that I think we should be prepared when the time comes, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. sorry. Okay. Yeah.